All right, I want to welcome everyone to another Blackmore Pro, uh, Connects Private Equity 101. Uh, just to do a test before we get started, I need you to raise your hands using the hand signal in your dashboard, letting me know that you can hear me. So this is a Gerald O'Dwyer, Managing Director for Blackmore Partners. Please use your system and raise your hand that you can hear me. Paul, can you hear me? I can, thank you. Okay, great. So please go ahead and uh, note whether or not you can hear me. Folks, find in your control panel um, that you can do that. Let's try Okay, we have started the broadcast. We're going to just do a little test. This is Gerald O'Dwyer, Managing Director for Blackmore Partners. Very excited to be with everyone here with Bell Health Partners, Paul Barrett, Managing Director. But before we get started, please rate, use your, in your control panel, raise your hand, uh, noting that you can hear me. Okay, good. The hands are starting going up. Excellent. Please, everyone, uh, acknowledge that you can hear me so that we know you're with us. And uh, please note that you have a handout section in your control panel. And in the handout section uh, is the presentation that Paul is going to be doing today. And there's a deal thesis template. There's deal thesis examples. You'll understand why those are important. In addition, I sent you a special offer on part of, of the Bell Health team. Paul uh, will be at the June 13th conference in Chicago. And if you're an executive in uh, healthcare and you're a fit for their criteria, that special offer is going to be for you. You're going to hear more about it as we go along. Um, so we're going to go ahead and get started here. I want to remind everyone that this um, uh, presentation is brought to you by Blackmore Partners, Inc. and Blackmore Connects. There are three divisions to Blackmore. There is the deal division. And what we do is we work with executives to monetize their background, to put together a deal thesis, and develop a target list. And then the goal is for you to run that. You get salary, bonus, and equity, or take a board position. It could be, uh, it, it all depends on your needs. So you get salary, bonus, and equity. There are no charge to executives. That process is typically a 12 to 24 month process. Why so long? is it just takes time to get deals done. Paul will probably uh, share his experience about that as we go through the call today. We also have, besides the deal division, we have the talent division. The talent division has two partners, Xian Chow, Mike Johnson. I did forget to mention that the deal partners on the uh, uh, Blackmore Partners Inc. side, the deal part is Rick Grady, Yelena Aldestein, Manchin Malahan are the deal team members and myself. On the Blackmore Partners executive search side, where we do about 200 searches a year for private equity in uh, 54 different industries, we have Xi'an Chow, Mike Johnson are the key partners, and they have eight full-time recruiters. Um, if you want to uh, get into C-level opportunities, I believe you can go right to this page that you see coming up on your screen in C-level opportunities, make sure you fill it. It gets you into our Infusionsoft system and gets you into meetings. The final group at Blackmore Partners is the Blackmore Connects group. The Blackmore Connects group is a conference group, a networking group to help uh, executives expand their funnel. Private equity firms, um, uh, Getting in front of uh, private equity firms is not an easy thing. Resumes don't do it. We'll talk about that in a moment. Blackmore Connects uh, has uh, purchased recently the PitchBook database. We rent that on a yearly basis, and um, we then make it available to executives. Why? If you're going to get into private equity as an executive, 
What you need to do is you need to find private equity firms that are investing in niches that you know about. And a deal thesis, which I've attached to the handout section, is your calling card in private equity to get noticed. Paul will address that and why it's important compared to the thousands of resumes private equity firms typically get every year. They don't have time unless there's something differentiated about you. A deal thesis is a place to start. The Blackmore Connects Group offers the coaching, the development, the conferences, everything you need to differentiate yourself and get in front of private equity firms in a timely manner that are looking for deals, looking for ideas, and looking for replacement executives, looking for um, board members, looking for consultants, all of that. Paul will be addressing that as part of their executive outreach program uh, today. So let's talk a little bit about some of the topics that we're going to cover today. Uh, how to get the attention of private equity. And we've just briefly addressed it uh, right now. You don't use a resume. You do a deal thesis. You build out a list of about 200 P firms that are doing investments in those niches that you care about and that you're a fit for. So that's a way to, uh, if you will, uh, get the attention of private equity. Finding the right, we're going to talk about finding the right healthcare PE uh, partner. We're going to discuss why Bell Health is one of those, uh, why having a deal thesis versus a resume differentiates you. Uh, we're going to go through an overview of Bell Health and why it chose Blackmore as a strategic partner in the following areas. One, deal development. Two, um, executives. Executives who have a deal thesis for new ideas. Executives who can be uh, board members. Executives who can be replacement executives. Executives who can be advisors. We are working with Bell Health to do that. I do want to uh, 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 caution you, if you want to call it caution, do not send resumes to Bell Health. Uh, uh, Bell Health would like us to do all the qualification for them. Uh, they're primarily focused on uh, doing deal origination. Our job is to help you differentiate yourself before you get to Bell Health so that it's a very productive meeting in the future, either at the conferences that they attend and the next conference that they're going to be attending again is June 13th. And then there's August uh, 15th after that. You can go to our webpage and you can see all the dates uh, up here. I'm going to show you what they are. But as I was saying, do not send resumes to Bell Health directly. They're just not going to get responded. They don't have the time. That's why we're a strategic partner to help them do that. Okay, we're also going to be talking about PE, private equity and healthcare trends, the ways in which executives can get into private equity. Uh, we're going to talk about the Bell Health investment process for interacting with executives through Blackmore Connects. Healthcare trends, which I just discussed, discussed and targeted healthcare investment areas of Bell Health. Paul, I want to welcome you uh, to the call. Can uh, are you hearing me all right here? I am. Thank you, Gerald. Okay, I'm going to be uh, uh, handing uh, the uh, controls over to you in just a second. And I do want to mention um, to everyone, please start writing down questions that you have for Paul uh, during this presentation and now as we're preparing. So I can ask him and make things interactive. So I'm going to be monitoring the questions, and uh, I'm looking forward uh, to all of you uh, writing those down. Paul? Uh, welcome. I want to welcome again everyone, Paul Barrett. He's a managing director and head of origination for Bell Health. Uh, Paul, what does it mean to be head of origination? Well, Gerald, first I just want to thank you for the introduction and uh, in, in including this. We, we really do view Blackmore as a strategic partner, uh, and it's, it's been a terrific partnership so far. I just wanted to say that out of the gate, but yeah, head of origination. So we're, we're a small team. We're about 15 people. 
uh, on our investment team and a, and a handful uh, more, you know, corporate and, and uh, financial back office, you know, administrative roles. But so everyone uh, does a little bit of everything, whether it relates to origination or uh, execution, portfolio monitoring, even fundraising. But, uh, you know, leading origination, it, it's really, uh, you know, managing our existing relationships and our, you know, four main sourcing channels, which is, uh, you know, direct to founder relationships, either through, uh, you know, strategic partnerships like Blackmore, going to healthcare conferences or through our existing network, uh, going through the M&A and their intermediary community, uh, working with independent sponsors or uh, most relevant today's discussion, finding uh, terrific and experienced healthcare executives to back. So uh, it's really just trying to fill those four channels, uh, stay top of mind with our uh, broad uh, networks in each of those four areas. And uh, again, just be uh you know, fast, responsive, uh, you know, and, and essentially uh, communicate to the market, uh, you know, our, our pitch, our vision, uh, you know, our differentiating factors, which is, you know, focused exclusively on healthcare, uh, you know, um, operational and entrepreneurial background. And then we go to the lowest end of the market, uh, that one to four million EBITDA zone, willing to go higher, but also to differentiate ourselves, willing to go lower, uh, given how, competitive the market is today to uh to give ourselves a you know an even better shot at uh you know finding the gold which is uh you know a platform investment. Yeah, yeah, let me ask a question. When you say one to four million EBITDA is your where you're looking to start at the very lower end of the middle market for uh opportunities. Say more about that. Yeah, that's right. So we'll uh we describe the entire range as, as one to eight million of EBITDA. Uh you know we have uh, we're investing from our second fund, which is 350 million, and we have 50 million of of equity to put into each platform. So we can certainly buy uh, seven, eight million EBITDA businesses. Uh, however, where we're seeing uh, a ton of the opportunity and and proprietary opportunities, which is where we like to focus, and we uh, put backing executives with their own proprietary pipelines, absolutely in that category. Uh, you know, unbanked processes, uh, a little bit smaller businesses, often. Uh, you know, putting one, two, three uh, businesses together, even out of the gate, uh, that that get us to that four or five million EBITDA is is what we are focusing on, particularly the last two years. Again, really a function of where we are in a pretty hot market. That's really great, Paul. You know, one of the things that's uh, apparent to me: very few private equity firms have the wherewithal or the expertise to combine multiple. Uh, firms at one time to get to that uh, uh, EBITDA range that you're talking about. Can you talk a little bit about your capabilities of doing integration? Talk a little bit about your capabilities of um, uh, doing simultaneous closes, or do you first get the one million EBITDA and then you have these other uh, ca uh, firms lined up? How does it work? And then I'm going to let you go into your presentation before I just drill down too much here. Absolutely. Yeah, and it's a great question. So we have a, you know, we have a great case study going on right now. Uh, we're closing uh, dermatology clinics in New York and New Jersey. Uh, you know, dermatology overall, a very attractive uh, area of healthcare, uh, strong, steady reimbursement, uh, really highly fragmented area, uh, and a ton of, uh, you know, physicians uh, operating, you know, one to eight, uh, you know, in one to three offices in the greater, you know, New York, New Jersey area. Uh, which is obviously a very affluent uh, patient population. So um, we signed four LOIs essentially simultaneously uh, and are closing those deals at once. It it obviously brings uh, a lot of integration challenges, a lot of deal execution challenges, but at the same time, uh, you know, to get, you know, about 4 million of EBITDA on a proprietary basis where we were able to go direct to the, the founders and the docs, uh, you know, and negotiate pretty attractive, uh, you know, valuations and terms for the deals. We're we're willing to do the heavy lifting as it relates to the operational stuff, the integration, and really executing the deals in order to get into uh, arguably uh, the hottest, uh, you know, physician practice management area uh, in uh, in a very attractive market. So the we we view the trade offs of uh, a ton of work. Obviously, we need to get great people, uh, you know, to help us because we're not. Uh, you know, day-to-day -day operating these businesses. So it's incredibly important uh, to get, uh, you know, people like the audience on the phone today, uh, 
you know, in uh, leading management positions to do a lot of the execution with our support because we have experience in that. But at the end of the day, uh, we just view a ton of opportunity of, of, of aggregating businesses, again, at that lower end of the market to build a, you know, to come out with a consolidated platform in incredibly attractive healthcare services areas, uh, you know, and then sell to a strategic or a sponsor where you're getting, uh, you know, monster exit multiples. Really great. And when you're getting multiple, uh, those uh, expanded multiples, uh, for the executives on the phone, you want to think about that's one of the strategic opportunities for you getting and putting your own deal together with private equity. So one of the things we talked about earlier, there's multiple ways to get into private equity. One is you hope for a recruiter to call you. And private equity firms are less and less are relying on recruiters. They're working with folks like Blackmore Connects. They're working through the other partners who happen to meet executives. Um, the other way to get into uh, private equity is do a deal thesis as kind of your calling card so you can differentiate yourself in, in, with a private equity firm. You could send a resume. You know, um, what's the difference, um, uh, Paul, to you between when an executive just sends a resume in versus uh, they have a perspective on a niche or the market? What does that do for you in terms of interest, getting your attention, uh, say more. Yeah, it's, that's an incredibly relevant point for us because we do receive resumes uh, all the time. And the first question is, you know, we ask, I guess, two things. One, uh, you know, is there a place for them in the existing portfolio? But that's a much, uh, you know, kind of narrower base of opportunities. We have, you know, 10 platform companies and there may be, uh, and there oftentimes are obviously slots to fill. However, uh, there's always a conversation to be had when there's uh, a thesis or a pipeline uh, or a strategy in addition to, uh, you know, being tagged to a highly experienced person uh, where we can then turn around and pitch internally. You know, we need to get on the phone with this person ASAP. This is they have expertise in an area that we've been targeting. They could be the person that we that we back in, you know, in a very mutually beneficial uh you know, situation where we're bringing the capital, we have our own relationships with payers, hospitals, physician groups, uh, you know, but the key is getting first uh, a leader and an operator, one, uh, and two, uh, with a proprietary pipeline, which we're, you know, usually the genesis of that is just personal relationships over the, you know, over a career. That combination is really, really powerful. Really great, Paul. Let's go on through the slides. Excellent. So just quickly, uh, introduction on Bell Health. So uh, we're a healthcare-only private equity firm. Again, investing out of Fund Two, which is 350 million. Uh, we focus on uh, three areas that we describe, which are pretty broad: service, product, and distribution. Uh, healthcare companies always uh, backing uh, and investing in founder-owned and entrepreneurially owned companies in the U.S. Uh, you know, again, a few ways that we differentiate ourselves, healthcare only, uh, founders of our fund and everyone on the team has healthcare operational experience. Uh, and then lastly, that we're, we're willing and able uh, to do a lot of the heavy lifting at the lower end of the market, uh, you know, in order to put together platforms and incredibly, uh, you know, attractive uh, and, and high growth healthcare services areas, but at a little bit more reasonable multiples, uh, you know, outside of traditional auctions that are in the, you know, seven to 15 million EBITDA zone. Uh, so we are uh, investing out of fund two, which is 350 million. We raised that spring of 15. So we're just at uh, three years. Uh, we have five platform companies soon to be seven. Uh, the two most recent ones, uh, one I already mentioned, dermatology uh, group in New York and New Jersey. Uh, this, that will be number seven. Number six is a substance abuse business uh, in Florida. Uh, predominantly out of network, but a uh, long history and track record, uh, more normalized margins uh, in network contracts and a, and a great executive team there. Uh, the five other uh, platforms and, and listing these off, and we're going to go into a little bit more detail uh, as it relates to the companies, but they're pretty representative of, of the areas that we like. Uh, we have about you know, 12 to 15 uh, overall areas of healthcare that we're uh, laser focused on. And that can expand a little bit, particularly if we find a great uh, executive, obviously, with a pipeline. Uh, but we uh, are pretty focused, uh, you know, on those uh, 12 to 15 areas. So the other five companies well, we have. The, yeah, I'm going to interrupt you. you. Talk about the pipeline executives. You may be saying to yourself, well, I don't know anyone. 
Well, the mission of Blackmore is to help monetize your background into a deal thesis and then start building out targets to go after. So that's what Blackmore's role in working strategically with Bell Health is to help prep you for doing that, the how-to, the strategy to do that. So don't worry about whether you you're a, have that pipeline at this moment, executives. We will assist you in doing that. Continue, Paul. Correct. Yeah, and it's not a I'm, – Gerald, I'm glad you, you, you mentioned that. I mean, we're totally focused on, on the partnership aspect of this. Uh, and again, the, the two key pieces, you know, from our end, we're bringing the capital uh, and, and healthcare relationships and some sector expertise. Uh, the executives are obviously bringing their expertise, and then it's it's up to all of us together, uh, you know, to act on the network. And when we have networks ourselves, so even if there's just a if the door is slightly ajar, if we have, you know, the, the pipeline can be a moving target. Uh, you know, it doesn't need to have, you know, 15 names that have signed LOIs yet. It can it can be, you know, earlier stage than that. Uh, so, you know, continuing on the, the existing portfolio. So we have the largest home health company in Virginia. Uh, we have uh, an outsourced emergency room services company in Florida. Uh, we have a generic over-the-counter manufacturing business in New York. Uh, women's reproductive health, especially pharmacy in Boston and uh, a national staffing business in uh, Edmond, Oklahoma. So all found our own uh, attractive areas of healthcare, you know, all different parts of the United States, a lot of aggressive acquisition strategies. Uh, for example, in staffing, we made the uh, first investment in October 2016. Over the subsequent 12 months, uh, we acquired four other companies, all found our own, all rolling significant equity. And we started at about uh, 1.7 1.75 million of, of EBITDA, so at that lower end, but now we have a, a 10 million plus EBITDA business, uh, you know, through an aggressive acquisition strategy. So that's, uh, along with dermatology, two pretty good case studies of where we could, uh, you know, we would love to start small uh, together uh, with the folks on the phone uh, and then, you know, build the pipeline out as, as time goes on, but be aggressive as it relates to that. So, you know, buy our, buy our way to seven to 10 million of EBITDA, then grow organically to 20 and then sell to together, which will be an outstanding outcome for all, all shareholders. Okay, next, you want to go to the next slide? Um, yeah, so just we go. a little bit more background. I'll go quickly on this on Bell Health. So we have, again, about 20 people, five in the back office, 15 on the investment team, uh, lead origination, but everyone uh, pitches in. Uh, you know, we have four deal leads, essentially myself and three others. I lead staffing and dermatology in addition to, uh, you know, origination activities, which, uh, again, just is the quarterback internally on the Bell Health side to the executive team. Going to the next page. So we, we are very uh, proud and excited about our, you know, origination successes over the last few years. We, you know, 2015 and 16 were really foundational, uh, you know, building years and, and, and really Kind of outlining the strategy that we wanted to execute on and we really feel like we're hitting our stride now uh saw about you know 575 deals in, in 15 uh went up to you know a little under 800 and then 1200 last year and then we're on pace for 1350 this year uh so we're very excited about that and and obviously not only are we you know seeing great deal volume but we're executing on that so we you know we had done three deals one platform uh, two add-ons in 15, you know, three deals in 16, but we we did nine total uh, last year, and we we expect 15. So we have great in 2018. So we have great momentum. Uh, you know, no no small part to very important strategic relationships like Blackmore that are uh, you know allowing us to build our executive network uh, to allow us to uh, you know hit our target of you know three to five platforms uh, this year, next year, and into the foreseeable future. Let me add on to that. You know, one of the things, if you look uh, on uh, Paul's slides, they're talking about the deal flow that they're seeing, 1,350 deals among all the different partners and uh, staff at Bell Health, but they're only closing X number of platforms. In part, you know, there's a lot of things that aren't a fit, but another thing it is, is they don't have an angle yet for it. And private equity firms, they're very smart, they're great with money, but they need executives with niche ideas. They need guys that can help give them bandwidth 
to execute. And that bandwidth means uh, on uh, integration. That means bandwidth in terms of adding board members. It means bandwidth of having executives that they can bring you deal flow and say, what do you think? Where are the skeletons here in this deal? They're not looking for yes men. They're looking for executives who are true partners who are helping them avoid uh, big pit pitfalls uh, uh, on deals. Paul, any color on that? Yeah, absolutely. That's, that's very well said. And it's we are seeing a ton of deals, uh, but the, the the ones that were uh, – are really impactful and, and that we can be actionable on. And then number one on the top of the list is, is an executive with, with a pipeline because there's a personal relationship there and obviously in an area that we all deem to be attractive uh, because, you know, it's outside of a process. Typically, we can go direct to the founder and we can move very quickly. Uh, and, you know, our part of that equation is to have the capital, be a good steward, uh, you know, and move quickly. Uh, and then obviously, you know, on the other side, it, it's bringing the relationship to bear and then we, you know, execute the transaction and we're off to the races. And it's, yeah, it's seeing 1,300 plus deals to do, uh, you know, two to four platforms a year. So, uh, you know, it is incredibly valuable, uh, you know, to find that, that niche area, a thesis, uh, an operator, and then, and then go for it. Okay. Next slide. I mentioned this briefly in the beginning, just the you know the channels where we're originating. Uh, you know, traditionally focused on uh, going direct to founders, uh, either through conference attendance or our existing network. Uh, also, brokers and intermediaries, M and A advisors. But we're really uh, you know trying to uh, expand and build upon our network uh, in the executive space, just because as we you know the whole uh, thesis of this call is is how. Uh, valuable that can be, uh, and, and mutually beneficial for all parties to to execute on a, on a pipeline that's in hand with an experienced operator. So uh, that is really our objective for the second half of 2018 and, and beyond is to uh, accelerate our relationships and uh, in the executive world and and find actionable items through that. And Paul, you know, your well, Blackmore Connects is our conferences, our executive network are doing all the coaching and developing. Can you talk a little bit about all the different things that you've been learning that Blackmore Connects brings to the table in prepping executives versus oh, an executive randomly coming to you? What are you noticing? Yeah, there's a huge difference. It's it's really and we, and we see this every day. It, it's you know, it's a blind resume, uh, you know, into our info box. Uh versus a, a, a five page uh, thesis rationale, uh, you know, industry uh, markup and, and a pipeline and really the, the understanding and, and it takes about, you know, 60 seconds to get to the point, uh, you know, when we're, we're working through Blackmore and it's incredibly unique actually. I mean, we have not found, uh, you know, in a similar executive uh, you know, liaison and group out there that, that puts all these pieces together. The, the alternative really is just, just receiving a resume and an inbox. And that's, uh, you know, it, it doesn't stand up to the alternative. And, and what I hear from executive, uh, from, uh, PE firms that when, uh, executives come to you and they haven't been through the Blackmore, uh, connects education process, what they tend to do is they tell you all the things they can do for you. Maybe they try to get to uh, meet with you for an hour over lunch or dinner and, or breakfast. And uh, folks, private equity firms just, as you're going to discover, just don't have the time for it. What they, because as Paul, as a deal originator, the number one uh, goal of the origination folks is to build the pipeline to look at deals. And uh, so that if they're spending an hour on the phone with you and uh, just listening, they could be viewing another 10 or 15 deals. So one of the missions of Blackmore Connects is allow you to have meaningful conversations with these private equity firms in 15 to 20 minutes. That's all they need. They know patterns in their market. And in that 15, 20 minutes, they know uh, if they're going to move forward. And in fact, just recently, uh, we, we put together 
uh, six executives with uh, deal <laughs> theses. And what I, what I, from what I understand, maybe you have a little vignette. You can think back to you and me. You were just happening to do a deal. You read the thesis. You had the conversation with the executive, and immediately he, you went on with them on some opportunities that you were working with. Can you add a color to that? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we had a conversation this morning about a space that we've been uh, targeting with with an executive, an incredibly experienced guy that you introduced us to. Uh, in the 503B compounding space, it's a very unique uh, area of the market. There, I mean, healthcare is very nuanced on the on the reimbursement and regulatory front, but 503B is you know nuanced within the nuance in terms of uh, you know you you really have to have domain expertise in that exact area uh, you know in order to target it, which makes it very attractive because not a lot of people do. Uh, so we had the initial conversation with a, a really experienced uh, former CEO. He would probably be executive chairman in this uh, in this role, and he all already brought uh, a CEO candidate, his lieutenant that he's uh, worked with in the past. And, and we're in active discussions literally an hour or so ago uh, on targets to, uh, you know, to get in touch with, because uh, we've been chasing 503B for two years. They've been looking for the right capital partner. It's a perfect marriage and uh, potential marriage. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's very unique uh, you know, to get to that point that quickly. And that's uh, entirely credit to Blackmore, understanding how, uh, you know, putting the two groups together, how that works. Great. And so, you know, executives, trust us to help you prepare, save time of both your capital provider and you by having the right funnel that matches you. Continue, Paul. Sounds good. So going to the next page, uh, so just to highlight, and, and I think we did, you know, briefly in the beginning, but we we had a great, and we're, we have a great current success story in, in backing an executive, and really a catalyst uh, for uh, you know expanding the strategy because it's been so fruitful in this case. So this is the same uh, dermatology deal that we mentioned in the beginning. So I had the opportunity to meet a very experienced uh, recruiter and derm lab salesperson on the East Coast. Uh, she's worked uh, within uh, dermatology physician offices for 25 years, has incredibly close relationships with all the docs. Uh, she's obviously been a service provider in the space in the past, uh, selling lab and then uh, starting her own uh, recruiting firm. So we uh, had the opportunity through uh, an intermediary friend of mine uh, to make the introduction and, and, and pitch her on uh, you know, a collaboration and a partnership that's a little bit different for her to uh, turn around and, and be part of the Bell Health team, executive team for the Derm platform, and also uh, get origination fees uh, based on her introduction. So she, uh, you know, we developed a, a pitch deck together and uh, approached 15 uh, physician groups and uh, successfully, you know, pitched four direct and signed LOIs, and now we're closing in the next 30 days. So that's it's our perfect case study of, of finding a mutual alignment in an attractive area. Uh, you know, being a good good steward and good partner and being fast and clear and incentivizing everyone and then, uh, you know, it, attacking a very attractive space. And and with that, you know, the, on the slide, you know, just, just highlighting what were some of the areas that we're trying to replicate that in. Obviously, we mentioned 503B this morning, uh, you know, through uh, Gerald and his team, they've introduced us to a, a host of executives and, and basically every area that we're uh, looking at and we continue uh, to look forward to, to additional uh, introductions uh, because they're, you know, finding, uh, you know, experienced executives in RCM and physical therapy, GI, uh, you know, all of our target areas is, again, incredibly valuable for us and, and, and absolutely a, a focus area of our firm right now. And as Paul says, there's 15 areas. We're going to go to a few more, uh, many more of the target sectors here in the, in the I believe, the next uh, slide. And, um, and give some examples. Uh, but I want to encourage all of you, once again, nothing replaces where we can get you phone meetings with the different private equity firms such as Bell Health that match the area. But you want to get to see the whites of each other's eye through the conferences. And uh, so if you're you know, interested, if you're a fit as we go through uh, these different sectors, Make sure you're sending me your resume right away today. Let's get you to uh, meet Paul at the conference. He has a few more slots, uh, but there will also be other opportunities to meet other uh, other firms. So you're you're going to really leverage your time 
uh, at the conference. Continue, Paul. Thanks, Gerald. Yeah, so just you know, two pretty uh, hot areas that we're uh, you know investing time and resources and and, and executing on platforms right now. We kind of divvy them up uh, just as two case study areas. Uh, you know, behavioral health overall, and then uh, you know, especially physician practice management. Obviously, we mentioned uh, derm. Uh, plenty. Some of the other areas that we're looking at, ENT allergy, GI, uh, orthopedic, all have pretty attractive characteristics uh, similar to dermatology in that they're uh, strong reimbursement, a lot of growth opportunities, uh, specifically, you know, on GI uh, and orthopedic, you can open up ASCs, which is, uh, you know, a huge new uh, potential revenue stream that's that's untapped for some groups that we're in discussions with. Uh, Really terrific growth opportunities in a lot of these specialty practice groups, and then uh, you know very appealing in the sense that uh, you know it's still incredibly fragmented. So uh, being at the lower end of the market, there's uh, a lot of deals to be done for us. And then behavioral health, you know, we're uh, making in, an investment in the substance abuse uh, sector. We've we've looked at a variety of different uh, behavioral health uh, opportunities on the eating disorder side, uh, more traditional uh, psychiatric and mental health. Uh, you know, a lot of, uh, you know, founder-owned and entrepreneurial uh, opportunities and attractive areas to invest right now uh, in behavioral health broadly. So uh, just two uh, sectors that we are uh, laser focused on right now. And uh, quickly, just moving into the Fund 2 portfolio, I mentioned that at the, you know, I kind of rattled through each uh, company just to you know, give you a sense of, you know, representative areas uh, that are uh, attractive to us uh, and, and that we've invested in. We are uh, very excited and proud of the, the portfolio that we've put together. We, we view it as unique. Uh, you know, we, we have uh, a variety of uh, healthcare services, product and distribution areas uh, that are all high growth. Uh, again, all founder entrepreneurial owned businesses uh, that, that we remain, uh, you know, very excited about. So just to you know quickly go through some of the investment rationale, which uh, you know will hopefully provide some uh, helpful context uh, again in terms of the areas that we like, and as you develop your uh, you know executive back thesis, attracted by our universe. I mean we uh, you know don't need to be heroes in the sense that uh, you know we can uh, monitor uh, the PE and strategic uh, you know exit landscape pretty closely. And again, since we we go to that lower end of the market. If we're seeing dermatology groups uh, trading for between 12 and 15 times with anything for scale, uh, you know, we do have the opportunity to, you know, slide in at the lower end of the market and build a platform buying everything from, you know, five to seven X uh, to get the consolidation and eventually, you know, the multiple arbitrage uh, in that. You know, limited concentration, there's there's uh, some sectors like, you know, medical device manufacturers and, and even some revenue cycle businesses tend to have a little bit more customer concentration than others. Uh, so we try to limit that risk. However, uh, particularly if, if it's through an aggressive acquisition strategy where we're able to diversify away from some concentrations, uh, you know, we, we, we will uh, gladly do that. Uh, again, fragmented spaces we love because uh, we can go to that lower end of the market, you know, buy one to five uh, group doc practices uh, or even on the revenue cycle side, uh, you know, niche providers in, in complementary areas. Uh, on the staffing side, uh, you know, what we did do over the last uh, 18 months or so, you know, we identified that sector uh, as an attractive area because, you know, the majority uh, of uh, healthcare temporary staffing businesses were, you know, owned and operated by one to two two people who highly experienced in the space, but focused on one area. So whether it be travel nursing or dialysis or pharmacy or a VMS technology product, not a lot of uh, 10 to 15 million EBITDA diversified in national businesses. Uh, so again, over the course of 12 months, we bought uh, a pharmacy and dialysis company. We bought a technology business in the VMS side to give us direct access to the hospitals. We bought two travel nurse businesses and then an interim leadership company. So we have, you know, now we're national diversified with, uh, you know, six founders running the five unique divisions. Uh, and we have a very attractive asset uh, as compared to uh, just one of the standalone companies uh, on its own. So just to highlight a little bit more. Uh, a ahead, little uh, questions about criteria uh, for a deal thesis. Uh, Paul, what makes, uh, you know, uh, deal theses can be everything from a specific, you know, target company to go after. But let's just talk about the typical exec 
uh, on this call that's listening or they're listening post-call and they're starting on their deal thesis and they want to more do uh, uh, maybe something about the industry and niches, what are some of the key questions that you're going to want to ask them um, to uh, about? So I guess first, uh, and it's likely you know a sector or area of interest that we have some familiarity with, which is the benefit benefit of being a healthcare focused sponsor. Uh, that it, we we don't need a lot of uh, you know education up front, but it, but of course we'll uh, you know lean on and 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 there will be a very collaborative process in terms of answering questions that we don't have. Uh, expertise in, but you know, first and foremost, we'll uh, you know want to speak to this the sector, you know, and understand what's going on in the trends. If we haven't already uncovered this in terms of uh, you know reimbursement, I guess to take you know the generic over-the-counter manufacturing uh, business as an example, uh, you know, who are the payers? Who are the customers? Uh, how is this business getting reimbursed? Um, and then once you have that, the kind of the the five to ten sector bullets, uh, you know, underneath you, then it then it really turns to the the deal specific opportunities, which is is this person willing to sell a majority? Uh, you know, would this founder role? Uh, you know, what would they uh, like their uh, you know executive role to be in the business? Do they want to sell 100 percent, or would they more ideally like to set, you know sell 20 percent or, or or 80% rather, or 90% and, and remain a stakeholder. You know, what is the growth thesis uh, related to this specific business? Is this an organic, uh, you know, a real organic play or uh, is this, you know, an, an, an aggressive uh, add-on acquisition strategy, which is going to be the real uh, driver of value? And then, uh, you know, are there, if that's the case, are there peer companies uh, that we can target, uh, that this founder may know, uh, you know, that, that we can aggressively pursue. Right. Yeah, that's a key thing right there is when you're working executives with owners, you can always ask them what relationships they have. Another thing about when uh, Paul is talking about rolling money in, these days, executives, when they go to sell, especially in these smaller companies, there's a lot of future upside it's much better for these executives to stay on and, and pitch in with helping grow the company and have a big double payday that they wouldn't be able to get. The great thing about private equity is private equity wants to put the right resources, time, money, um, you know, people to help grow this where these typically these entrepreneurs could not do it otherwise. They could not get the really kind of the bank loans that they probably need, or these owners just don't have, want to take the risk of getting the big bank loans that it takes. And uh, that's the beautiful message that you want to bring to these owners. There's an opportunity to leave money in the game, be on the team, help grow it, but grow with people who have a lot of, of industry expertise, much more than they could afford on their own, and the private Bell Health is willing to put the resources there and bet on for that in the future. It's a great message. Paul, color on that? Yeah, I think that's that's a great point, and that is our pitch. And it's you know once we partner up, and I guess it's the first stage. You know, the introductory meeting. You know, pick our target healthcare sector. Uh, you know, be on the same page uh, as it relates to the strategy. Then it's it's talking the specifics of the pipeline. You know, what founders uh, can we uh, collectively go pitch? What should the messaging be? Uh, what will resonate with this founder? What's the financial profile of this business? Uh, and then uh, you know, the next stage of that is uh, you know, what does valuation potentially look like? And then what? How are we going to collectively grow this business? Uh, both organically and and you know through uh, aggressive add-on acquisitions that will you know generate substantial value for us. So I think that's part of the, the process of how our partnership would would look like. So you know, again, just moving through the uh, you know the rest of the portfolio, uh, we have a manufacturing business, Geritrex, uh, upstate New York. They make creams, ointments, lotions sold into hospitals, post acute care chain. Also uh, sold into retail. Uh, we have a terrific executive management team. We bought this business from uh, a little bit of an older founder uh, who rolled 10% and stepped away. So in this case, we brought on uh, a full executive management team that was highly experienced and uh, generic uh, over-the-counter uh, 
businesses in manufacturing. And, uh, you know, we're formulating new products, doing a lot as it relates to R&D and uh, just trying to grow the sales channel, uh, you know, to, uh, you know, to really drive uh, sales and growth for this business. Moving to the second, uh, specialty pharmacy business on the woman's health uh, reproductive side. Uh, we've done a lot in specialty pharmacy distribution. Uh, over the years, we've had uh, three uh, total platform investments in that space. Uh, and the one remaining is, is Village, which is focused on women's health, which is a, a growing and very attractive area of the market. Uh, so this is a mail order distribution business uh, with some additional you know, support services uh, over the phone. And, uh, you know, we did uh, back uh, a group of founders in this company and then supplemented them with uh, an executive chairman who's highly experienced uh, and a couple other sales personnel. Moving to the healthcare staffing business, AHSG, uh, very excited about uh, what we're doing in the you know, temporary healthcare staffing space. We now have a you know, national diversified uh, platform, uh, five divisions, uh, five different offices throughout the country. Uh, and a terrific executive management team. We, we brought on Steve Francis, who founded the largest uh, healthcare staffing uh, business in the country called AMN Healthcare. He started that in 1985 uh, and eventually sold it four times to private equity firms and then took it public. Uh, so he's uh, mentoring our executive team, and we're, we're, we're glad to have him and very excited about the, uh, the growth prospects in, in healthcare staffing. I have a, I have a question, uh, all about uh, a niche area. Um, one of the questions uh, is coming from an executive, uh, Robert, and he's saying blockchain will revolutionize the healthcare industry. What interest and in what areas uh, in emerging in emerging blockchain healthcare com uh, healthcare technology companies do you have? That's a great and very interesting question, but unfortunately, uh, not an area of expertise for me. Uh, it's it hasn't yet hit our radar. In terms of the existing portfolio or or new opportunities, but I, I would love I would love to learn more as it relates to that. So, uh, Robert, thing is, get a deal thesis and put together, and and once we have that, we'll get you. Uh, we'll surface that to Paul, and we'll get you on the phone. Sounds great. Excellent. So moving on to the next one, Care Advantage. So it's the largest home health business in the state of Virginia. Another uh, longtime founder-owned business that we are backing. Uh, about 30 million revenue, uh, and we've done two uh, add-on acquisitions, and we have a pipeline of about five others. Uh, great executive management team uh, trying to grow through unskilled private duty uh, and skilled uh, home health services. A lot of operational challenges uh, in terms of uh, managing, you know, an hourly workforce. Uh, but a lot of growth opportunities and, uh, you know, care in the home uh, is a great value, what, what uh, customers and patients want, and uh, also the lowest dollar uh, as it relates to the post-acute care chain, particularly hospitals, SNFs, uh, LTAC. So great value proposition in home health and uh, another very attractive uh, area for exits. Okay, I have another question about uh, deal thesis. And here's from Bradley. If you see a deal thesis where the executive owns a commercialized patented asset to combine with a larger medical device portfolio, for example, orthopedics, sports medicine, or distribution access, what are the types of deal structures that could support this type of deal? The executive could come with the deal to lead a larger combined entity. Uh, go ahead with uh, any comments or questions on that. Uh, back. Great question. Yep, great question, and and particularly in uh, pharma product and med device world, it's a little bit challenging in our model at times with uh, the stipulation that we need to be acquiring a cash flow positive business. There's a lot of incredibly interesting uh, either recently pat patented products uh, or niche med device products that are not yet uh, are either pre-revenue uh, or about to be commercialized. So for us, we uh, unless we could tag it to an existing portfolio company like Geritrex, which is actively looking for one-off product acquisitions, uh, so we can be a little bit more flexible as it relates to the financial profile, it does need to fit within our parameters of majority, being able to acquire majority and uh, have some cash flow base, unless it's folding into another uh, existing uh, platform. So once again, executives, let's clarify, this is actually typical of all private equity firms 
Pre-revenue companies are typically as a platform for the venture uh, venture guys. Uh, if it's uh, if it doesn't have at least one million of EBITDA and there can't be lots of add-on acquisitions, uh, this is what they consider an add-on uh, business. Okay. Perfect. So ICP, this is an outsourced emergency room services business. Uh, a lot of uh, Fragmentation in this area as well. There's a handful of strategics uh, which we love because uh, they've gobbled up a lot of the market. However, uh, a lot of local regional uh, hospitals uh, are uh, disenfranchised with the service levels that the the, the monsters in the in the area have, are providing. So uh, we've partnered with uh, three executives, and this is actually an executive-led uh, platform. We we uh, through our own uh, network, got in touch with experienced operators and, and free agents in this space that were looking for uh, a private equity backer. So we acquired uh, a 10 million revenue business uh, at the beginning of, of, or at the end of 2017, rather, and uh, you know continue to fill out our team and, and remain very excited about this opportunity. But another example of uh, partnering with executives first, uh, spending time with each other, uh, developing a thesis, and then slamming on the gas and uh, very excited about the prospects of ICP. You know, once again, folks, to give a, uh, a little um, commercial for Blackmore Connects, Blackmore Connects specializes in finding the PE firms that have executive-centric um, uh, focuses like Bell Health. Whether or not you're in uh, the healthcare or not, we can help, help you find those kind of private equity firms. Let me tell you, they're not necessarily uh, easy to find. Private equity firms, unlike Bell Health, tend to be just deal-driven and are not thinking about the executive uh, focus first. In fact, uh, as you saw Paul's strategy early on, that wasn't part of the strategy. But things have changed, and I'm curious what allowed, why the channel changed, adding these new strategies to work with executives with deal thesis. What has emerged since you started that has led to a CEO-centric uh, process for your company, Paul? Yeah, that's it's a great question, and I guess there's two pieces to it. One is you know the evolution uh, of our firm and, and trying to cast as wide a net as possible. Uh, so obviously focusing on you know the two more traditional existing channels of going somehow getting direct access to a founder or intermediaries is great, uh, but we want to you know widen our opportunity to find additional opportunities. And then second, uh, how effective and, and fruitful we've we've seen it be, and I mean, for a variety of reasons, obviously we, we've discussed that length today. But one we haven't really discussed is just the speed, uh, the execution, and the opportunity and the uh, efficiency in, in executing an executive led, uh, you know, thesis with, you know, you're, you're traditionally outside of, uh, you know, a six month, uh, you know, M and a advisor process. Uh, you're not necessarily being boxed in as it relates to valuation. It's really open road. Uh, so the, the opportunity to have a phone call, a meeting, and then be on the phone with uh, founders and executing LOIs all within weeks is is incredibly valuable and exciting for a firm like ours. So the message to all of you listening and uh, the future listeners here for this, start putting your deal thesis, start uh, identifying targets for the company, start reaching out to the owners, build rapport. You are the front and leading edge. Blackmore Partners will help you in how to have those conversations. And uh, when the time is right, we're going to have you, you know, of course, be at the conferences with Paul and, of course, uh, on the phone. Go ahead, Paul. Excellent. So just going to the last slide, we, we thought it would be uh, worthwhile to really kind of dig into the details uh, in terms of the uh, sectors that we're focused on. You know, the, the middle row is uh, existing areas of investment that remain, uh, you know, high areas of interest and attractive for us. Dermatology, home health, uh, outsourced emergency room services, uh, especially pharmacies, lab services, uh, generics, uh, you know, revenue cycle management, and, and you know, really ancillary providers, uh, you know, in those sectors. Uh, on the far right are areas that we're uh, steering clear of uh, as of now. And then on the far left is the is the high priority sectors 503B, 
uh, you know, behavioral health, mental health uh, service providers, uh, disease management, hospice. We've been uh, looking at aggressively uh, over the last several months. Uh, we love the MSO market. I mean, it's it's a play on the uh, you know physician practice management uh, sector in the sense that you know you provide all the uh, administrative back office and financial services without actually owning the practices. And we're looking at a group in the infertility space right now that that does that. And we uh, remain very uh, you know excited about that sector. Ophthalmology uh, talked to several groups, including one uh, on track, I think, for uh, a call next week, which was a Blackmore uh, executive uh, introduction, uh, which is terrific. It's, it's yeah, and actually, I'll, I'll give a little more detail on this right now because it's, again, a per perfect case study. Experienced operator uh, in the orthopedic space, uh, happened to have a friend and former colleague that uh, has a 3 million EBITDA ophthalmology group. Uh, with an incredible, um, very attractive profile uh, that we're setting up a call with and uh, pitching the founders direct. So it's all about time and place. And, uh, you know, that could be, you know, another platform for us, which is uh, terrific. Yeah, it's really great. Now, uh, executives, you can see private, all private equity firms have current sector investments. They have current and past areas and they have past areas. This is very important to understand, and you can't necessarily get it uh, always from their website. That's why it's important to set up calls uh, with them and uh, or pass stuff through, uh, again, Blackmore. Uh, because Blackmore, why these areas, if you notice, uh, biopharma, hospitals, pain clinics, the, all of that, there are paths uh, for Bell Health. But it doesn't mean if there are paths and if you know this area, there are paths for other private equity firms. There's uh, over 12,000 private equity firms out there. The Blackmore Connects is able to identify them. So what doesn't fit for one, there's always others. And uh, private equity firms, and Paul can talk about it, tend to be a little superstitious. When they have a bad experience, like, oh, we're not doing that again. You know, they get burned or, you know, there's changes in the industry. It's a moving target. Any color on that, Paul? That's that's absolutely true, and for better or worse, we do have some uh, pretty strong recency bias. You know, we're we're investing in you know ten, twelve companies per portfolio uh, per uh, per fund rather, and you know if we do have a bad experience or in particularly healthcare, you never know when the the reimbursement uh, acts comes you know swinging down uh, that might color your uh, you know approach to a certain sector. But things change, and and this is not uh, you know this list is. Does not include anything and everything. Uh, you know, there's there's tons of, of niche and attractive areas that aren't listed on here. And uh, you know, the biggest thing is is opportunity and access. And uh, you know, as you know, our philosophy as it relates to investment, you know, investing in the people is as critical as investing in an attractive sector. Uh, you know, ideally, you have a combination. You know, you have a perfect fit and marriage with the two. But uh, if there's a highly experienced executive that has a little bit of a contrarian approach, experience, and a pipeline, we are all ears for that as well. Okay. Um, let's. Uh, we have a few minutes left. I'd like to encourage people to start typing their last bit of questions. Um, this is, again, a, um, uh, I think a follow-up comment from Robert about his blockchain he says, there is a variety of companies in the existing portfolio, and I'm assuming he means yours. Describe what would be the most, ide uh, uh, most ideal deal for you, given the content provided in your presentation. Exit time frames, multiples. This will obviously vary across product services and staffing and portfolio. Well, Robert, uh, we're not going to have enough time for that question. And in a way, what he did, uh, what Paul did, is he, he described their high priority target sectors and their criteria, which is basically, let's go after any one of the high priority uh, target sectors in the one to five. But however, if all uh, those of you who are listening to this phone call, you have other niches, get me your niches, let's go over them, let's prepare the deal thesis. All of that is in your handout section. And for those of you who want to meet, uh, Paul, in person at the upcoming conferences, you need to get your resume into me right away. Uh, uh, we are offering a special uh, offer. All that is in your inbox. I sent you by email this morning. 
respond back. We have very limited spaces uh, for executives and Paul uh, for that. So we're about uh, two minutes out of time, and here came another question. Um, this is great uh, from Rabu. He says, I have no experience in healthcare, but interest in healthcare doesn't matter. I'm going to open, I'm going to answer the question. Well, all private equity firms are looking to get, um, if you will, a leg up on anything. They always want to work with industry experts. Paul can add some color to it, but there are always uh, folks that are not industry experts that are part of the deal team for. Uh, if you will, post-acquisition or pre-acquisition uh, pre due diligence. Can you talk about that, Paul? Yeah, it's a great question. And we yeah, we are looking for expertise in, in a host of areas that are common for all sectors and industries, including IT, legal, finance, uh, you know, even organizationally and, and from a leadership perspective. So uh, not having uh, healthcare expertise, we've hired a lot of executives, particularly on the the CFO uh, legal and even operations side that uh, are just exceptional people and executives that, that don't necessarily have the domain expertise, but uh, are talented and, and, and aggressive and there still is a place for them. Yeah, that's really great. Aggressive folks, private equity firms are looking for executives who can run marathon at the four minutes mile pace. So if you're that type of executive, you definitely want to get into our in our system, go to our Blackmore Partners, Inc., get your resume up there, get in the Blackmore process, get going to conferences. You heard it. Private equity firms are looking for dom uh, domain experience, but they're also looking for functional expertise to build out on teams. But it does take a funnel. And you, if you haven't watched the purple squirrel that I sent to you uh, earlier this morning, do so, and you got to build out your funnel of about 200 private equity firms uh, that uh, that you can be a match for. Blackmore Connects can help educate and do that, and they do that inexpensively. And of course, anything's possible with a deal. In closing, back to you, Paul. Yeah, I appreciate that, Gerald, and, and thank you, everyone, for your time. Uh, very much appreciate it. Look forward to uh, connecting with hopefully many of you in person. Uh, in June, or uh, if not, over the phone. Uh, it's a terrific partnership uh, with Blackmore, and we have uh, a ton of opportunity. We look forward to further engaging with the community and, and hopefully working with many of you. Thank you. This ends our uh, webinar. Thank you, everybody.